Hello, so we're going to try a part two of this problem now. Uh, as you can see, I crossed out part A, um, where we assume it's frictionless, and now we're going to do part C right here. That includes kinetic friction. As the this uh, block is extended to the right, the spring wants to move it to the left. There's throwing force. And as it moves it to the, re uh, to the r left, rather, <laughs> Um, there will be a force of kinetic friction from the block and the surface um, that goes to the right. Okay, so I already have the given here. It starts from rest, it will actually gain speed as the elastic potential energy is converted into kinetic. Um, it's a pretty uh, sizable cart and a hefty spring as well. I have the initial. Uh, position and you're supposed to find the final speed at the zero position with friction. Now if there is friction that means this is a friction is a non-conservative force meaning that it is path dependent. The work done by this is often dissipated into uh, surroundings uh, through thermal energy and so hence we'll be using this equation and here we'll be using uh, other standard equations kinetic energy mass potential energy we're actually going to need uh, friction in this case and because of that uh, we're going to need the free body diagram as well uh, that's not uh, in the fact that it's not accelerating in the y-axis and the formula for work okay so I'm going to try to keep the algebra to a minimum here uh, but we're going to have to dive in uh, deep pretty soon so let's try this out. Oop, don't, there we go. Okay, start with uh, an enhanced addition of the work energy formula. Here we're just gonna actually use the elastic potential energy. Uh, we can actually just simply assume that the change in potential, gravitational potential energy is zero. So we don't even have to include that one, okay? Then we have kinetic energy final minus initial, and same thing for the elastic potential energy. And if you watch the other video, you know that uh, the initial kinetic energy actually starts at rest, and then the final elastic potential energy is also zero because the final position is actually the equilibrium position okay so it simplifies our terms quite a bit and we're only left with the final kinetic energy minus the initial elastic potential energy okay so it's very similar to the other problem uh, but this time though we will now include friction Oh, wait, no. And it's negative because it wants to go to the opposite direction. And actually, the direction between the displacement, uh, I kind of skipped a step here. Uh, the direction between the displacement and the force is 180, so that results in negative 1. Okay, so let's break this down even further. I remember that our friction is mu k. N one half N P squared BS is what we're looking for. I squared it's a sub I. Okay, and let's go do a little aside here that we're gonna use fact that there's no acceleration in the y and then going back to our free body diagram uh, there's only two forces in the y the normal force and the the weight and it's actually from here I require my students to show that mg and then if I move this to that side I get that the magnitude of the normal force equals the weight and then I can plug that in 
over. Plug that in over there. Okay. You know what? Let me just actually plug that in. There you go. Now, um, let me teach you a really quick technique if you want to get rid of any fractions that are here, like the two. I'll just multiply by the least common denominator, which in this case is also a two. The two will show up over there, and we're left with this hunk of junk. It may look ugly, but it, it's the inside that counts. Okay, don't judge an equation by its variables. I'm going to move this to the other side. So it becomes a positive term. And I have no space. I'm trying to move a little bit quickly through the algebra, so please forgive me. Um, we're going to divide both sides by m, and also I'm going to do a 2 for 1, uh, take the square root as well. Mass cancels out there, and we're left with a formula, a very big formula, where we have uh, kxi squared. Let's write this down and square root of all of that. Boom. Now, um, all I know, I'm not going to show it for this video, um, is that the units of this all inside the square root should end up being meter squared or second squared because that will lead us to meters per second, which should match what we're measuring. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and plug in all the values. Which is quite a bit. Oops, that's a zero. Barely enough room. Add all of that. Okay, and uh, if you go ahead and plug that into your calculator, all of this, I recommend that you do the top first and then divide by the bottom, then you take the square root unless your calculator uh, can do all at once. And that actually results, I have a solution right in front of me. Oop, different color, different color. Into something slower than it was with the friction. Okay, uh, so let's change that. Uh, And sure enough, if you take a look at the equation over here, um, this second term, which includes friction, actually it removes, uh, uh, this is the work done by friction, it removes from the elastic potential energy um, from the spring. So it takes away from what it could have been converted into a speed or a kinetic energy to make the block go faster. Hence, it is slower, okay, compared to uh, if you or seven. This is without friction for comparison. Okay, so I hope that was a good uh, comparison. It was a bit long. Uh, it took me several takes, but I hope you all enjoyed. Once again, take a look at the, the bigger picture. Uh, this is an application of the work energy theorem. Okay, enjoy.